Thank you for staying tuned. We're staying with the Naira redesign issue and renewed cashless policy of the central bank. The non-availability of both the old and newly designed Naira notes at all channels, including banking halls, automated teller machine points, and points of sales terminals operators across the country has subjected majority of Nigerians to serious hardship. With many finding it difficult to access cash to buy basic things or transport themselves from one place to another. Now, as the lingering scarcity of both old and new notes continue to cripple economic activities nationwide and inflicting enormous pains on businesses, individuals and households, the manufacturing sector of the Nigerian economy is also agonizing in pains arising from poor sales due to the shortage of cash for individuals to make purchases and meet their needs, bringing their purchasing power next to zero. As these challenges continue to bite harder, the big question begging for answer now is what is the urgent measure needs to be taken to hurt the scarcity or what really needs to be done to address this? Well, I'm being joined by the Deputy President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Gabriel Idausa. Mr. Idausa, good afternoon, sir. It's good to have you join the program. Thank you very much. Uh, you have first-hand dealings with business people uh, at the chambers. Now, tell me, what has really been happening? Because for me, and for what we've seen, other journalists, not just me, long queues, and we see people at public places, uh, we see anguish of Nigerians. People are crying. A young lady tried to jump a fence to get into a bank. Tell us how it's been at your end. Uh, what you are saying at the consumer end, is also playing at the supplier and manufacturer end because since consumers don't have access to their cash, there are a lot of products and services that normally you buy with small amounts of money and you normally will not do transfers. So whether you are a street side retailer, whether you are even a supermarket or a manufacturer of fast moving consumer goods, you are directly affected by what is happening. Your sales are coming down, uh, members are organizing about it, and the concern is how quickly we can get out of a log jam. We have products to sell, there are consumers who want to buy your products, but they don't have the cash to do it. And it's not everywhere you can do transfers. In fact, the system, transfer systems, has been so overworked that a lot of transfers are dropping or not done on time. And so suppliers are just refusing to sell with transfers unless they have uh, an existing relationship with the buyer and can go back to them if those transfers do not work. So it's a log jam uh, from the supplier and manufacturers in at this point um, until there is a significant improvement in the situation. That's the experience of uh, our members who are suppliers and manufacturers, particularly the past consumer uh, moving uh, segment of the economy. Hmm. This is not really looking good for a country that just came off recession, a country struggling for growth, a country that is trying to move on and, uh, you know, address economic anomalies, microeconomic challenges that we face. And now we are having what looks like a cash crunch. People cannot even buy pure water to sell. What do you think? Well, it's not a cash crunch in the sense that people don't have at least the money they need to buy what they can afford. It is a system failure that arisen from the way the planning was done. And so it's a cash crunch impact, but a cash crunch that is not having to do with the buying capacity of individuals. So if we have to focus on the system and find how quickly it can be addressed. We have actually moved away from um, old notes. Conversations about old notes are no more relevant. Most people who have legitimate old notes have put in the banks. But conversation is how do we get access to our old money that we put in the bank because we put them in the bank. And so it's up to the central bank to come out with a whole range of emergency solutions. It has to be very quickly done to ensure that it does not aggravate beyond where we are as we speak. Hmm. Now, um, uh, let's look at uh, what is also happening around the POS machines, point of sales machines. Uh, that should be another end where we should 
uh, be able to get cash. But it looks like the Nigerian factor thing is now playing out there where people are paying as much as almost 50% to get their monies. Uh, now, I'm going to ask the question this way. What does this mean for somebody that has 5,000 and I have to pay 1,000 Naira to get my 5,000 Naira? Uh, clearly, that has affected my bottom line. Uh, so one will not be able to spend as much as possible. What's happening to the purchasing power of Nigerians at, at this time, considering this ugly development? Well, really, it's not a Nigerian factor. Mm. Whenever you have acute scarcity, whether it's created by system malfunction or a natural disaster, you will have people who want to take undue advantage of anywhere in the world. You know? So it's not really a Nigerian factor. There's acute scarcity of cash. And anybody who has cash, whether it's a POS, whether it's a teller in a banking hall, suddenly has powers that are amazing. You have almost power of life and death. For someone who needs maybe 2,000 Naira to come buy a malaria uh, drug that, that needs to save him his, his or her child. Or someone who has not had any meal for a day and he just needs to draw 3,000 Naira from the account to buy a meal. So it's just nature. That's the human nature and lower level of human nature to exploit any situation that seems to be too much uh, in their power and so much in their power. You know. So there is no um, surprise about that. The, the, the question is, how do we get past it? Because purchasing power is what you can express. If you have money in the bank and you cannot get it to buy anything, your purchasing power is zero. It's not even a certain amount. That's where we have now. For a lot of people, their purchasing power is zero, unless, of course, you, you can do a transfer and your, your vendor or your supplier is ready to accept the transfer. Where your supplier is not ready to accept the transfer, you have no cash in your head. Your purchasing power is zero, and that's where we are now. And any economy with a large number, millions of people with purchasing power zero at this point, it's essentially grind to a halt. Because an economy is an exchange of goods and services. So if you have supplier with goods and services on one end, the buyer on the other end does not have the money to consume the deal, then the economic machine just is more or less ground to a halt. That's, we are approaching that situation in many parts of the country where there is no other option for cash. And because there's no cash, economic activity has simply ground to a halt. That's, that's uh, it's amazing when you step out of the urban areas and you go more into the rural areas, and there are areas where nothing else happens except physical exchange of cash. That is what you have now. Uh, okay, let me now ask Adam. Naturally, we should make do of the digital platforms available, the online platforms available. Uh, I don't want to mention banks, names of any name of any bank, but I can tell you that if you go online today, you see a lot of complaints. I just saw one now more than. 15 trials and you know just to make a transaction decline decline and sometimes you're debited uh you the money doesn't get to uh the the seller and all of that and it becomes an issue so we we are yet to build our digital platform well to be maybe to compete with our, our peers maybe like the kenya empire in kenya and others of this development so the infrastructure cannot accommodate the volume at the moment so um mr delsa there seems to be a challenge. Something was not done well from the onset. Yes, the, the infrastructure we have was going very well with a normal situation. What we have now is an abnormal situation. Whether it is in Europe, whether it's in Kenya, where you have lesser, and a lot of transfers can be done for small transactions. There are still a significant amount of things that are done by cash. In most cases, for example, if you are going to take a bus ride anywhere in the world, you have the option of paying cash using your, your card, but that option is there. So a completely cashless society 
is still something in, 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 the, in the realm of fiction or imagination. We are moving very closely to a cashless situation in several countries, several countries, but we are nowhere near there, anywhere in Africa, or in fact, most of Europe, apart from one or two countries, maybe Norway in Europe, Singapore in Asia, and so on, that are almost close to zero cash environments. So we do need cash. The infrastructure takes time to build. Uh, we should always remind ourselves, we are 200 million people. Kenya is 52 million people, about one quarter of our population. In terms of size, so geographical size, which affects how you build your infrastructure, we are probably one and a half times uh, Kenya. So, so I, I don't believe those comparisons are, are, are relevant. What, what's relevant is that we have a situation that was a system design error. So having to have this cash change in six, six weeks and not making provisions for specific situations. For example, the rural areas, cut to rich areas, the POS uh, business community, and just have a general fix everybody, you know, without any specific arrangements for these categories of people. It's, it was easy to predict that you have a crisis. So it is how CVN can manage this crisis that will make a difference. The, the default has shown that our, our planning was not, not great. And now we have to deal with crisis. So whether we had the capacity to handle the volume of the transfers and online processes and demand we have now, it's not in doubt. Did not have that volume, did not design for it because most of us were still doing a lot of transactions in cash. So our infrastructure is supposed to be growing over time. And our movement towards a cashless society was also supposed to be calibrated over time. Maybe one year, two years, three years down the road, we'll get closer and closer to a cashless society. So on both sides, on the side, side of CBN that is designing our movement to a cashless society, on, on the side of the financial institutions that are building infrastructure, people were moving at a particular pace until suddenly this decision was taken that within six weeks, a country the size of Nigeria has to you know, move, change uh, currency, and uh, everybody should be able to do it within that time. So that, that's, that's the, the challenge we have. Nothing to do with lack of planning on the part of our, of our banks or in the builders of our infrastructure, because nobody told us five years ago that come December 2022, uh, Central Bank was going to take this kind of decision. If, if, if all online companies and the online platforms were told five years from now, there will be a sudden change. I can guarantee you that infrastructure would have built to take care of this. But you give people six months notice, it takes they have six months to, to, to build a massive increase in the infrastructure capacity of all the online processes that we are talking about. It is not something that you switch on from a certain level of uh, capacity to another level. We are talking of several old increase, maybe two, three, 10 times increase the volume of transactions you are seeing by way of transfers. If you want to buy a newspaper now, you, you could do a transfer. Yeah. If you want to pay your organizer, you have to do a transfer. So those are the kind of things you never thought of using transfers for. But today on my street, the, the street traders are taking transfers. Food sellers on the road are taking transfers. That never happened just months ago or even one month ago. So the, the infrastructure is overstretched, not just a little bit overstretched. It's overstretched, they have five or more times its normal capacity. Mm. We can accommodate. Before I let you go, if we can do this in one minute, in your thoughts, with all of these reactions and counter reactions we've seen, uh, do, you, do you think there's need for any extension? An extension will not of the problem because mm -hmm. most Nigerians have already brought their old notes to the bank. Yeah. There are very few Nigerians, except some best interests who probably still have some stacks of old notes hidden somewhere. 
who are talking of extension, we do not need an extension. The purpose of bringing old notes into the system. What we need is a vast expansion of the distribution of the new notes, a massive expansion of all the system that is being asked to distribute the, 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 the new notes. Nobody needs, nobody is saying I have, those who have this kind of money stacked, we are not talking. They know that they have been given enough time to bring their old notes into the system. So the real issue is find a way to dramatically improve access to, to the new notes. Don't extend, but if we can get, if everybody can get $20,000 from the ATM at first attempt, and on the counter, you can get $10,000, 10,000 Naira from both the ATM and, and the, the, the counters, in a few days, the crisis will be over. So that is what needs to be done. How to massively increase access to new notes, not extension of the time. It's not going to solve any problem. Well, indeed, something really went wrong. Deputy President, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sir Gribali Daosa, thank you so much for your time on the program. Thank you.